So I'll just go immediately with the brief. Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, webinar this evening with Dr. Ahmed al -Baid. Ahmed, how are you? Everything's fine? How are you, Diego? Fine, thanks for Thank being everything good for, on you. Okay, so what are we going to talk about this evening, Ahmed? Okay. Uh, so Diego, you know, uh, and most of the, um, our followers know that um, Root canal treatment is uh, considered one of the most complicated uh, procedures that we do as a dentist. And in our daily practice, we face a lot of um, complications um, within uh, the treatment. And many dentists, they encounter um, like complications during the procedure, like file separation, perforation, and uh, any other iatrogenic complications. So today, we're going to talk about how to identify these problems how to identify before we start the treatment, okay? So we need to know what we're gonna face during the treatment and thus we plan our treatment and what to use instrument and how and when. So we're gonna demonstrate uh, many scenarios and uh, from the preoperative X-ray or other information gathered from the patient, we can know what we're gonna face and how to formulate treatment plan and thus minimizing or uh, eliminating any complication or risk factors. This is going to be absolutely interesting. So if any of the already more than 50 people connected to this live stream want to ask any question, remember to just write them in the chat, in the comments. I will actually mark them down and ask all of them at the end of the presentation so we can let Dr. Ahmed do the whole presentation with these and at the end there will be the Q&A session. So without much further ado, let's get started with the uh, how to safely manage different endodontics scenario. Thank you. Hi everyone, good evening or uh, good morning, depending on the time zone from where you are watching us. And welcome to a new webinar of the series that's conducted by Style Italian Endodontics. Um, today we're going to talk about how to safely deal or manage with different endodontic scenarios that we may encounter. Um, how to identify them before we start working, uh, how to formulate a treatment plan to prevent or at least, let's say, minimize uh, iatrogenic complications. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Ahmed al -Wa'ad. Uh, I'm a silver member of Style Italiano Endodontics. I have MSc in Indo from King's College London and currently I'm working as microscopic endodontist and restorative dentist in Dubai, UAE. Uh, before we jump into the topic we are talking, uh, we're going to talk about today, uh, we will have some recap about the reason why we are doing root canal treatment. We will go through different scenarios, some of them we already have discussed before and and new cases or new scenarios and let's see what are the modification um, that we can do in our uh, root canal preparation to um, depending on the scenario or complication that we may face. So what is endodontology? According to the European Society of Endodontology, they have identified it's the study of the form, function, health, injuries and the, uh, and the diseases of uh, the dental pump and also periodical region. We all know that uh, the main etiological factor 
for palpal and uh, periradicular diseases is apical periodontitis caused by infection. So as infection is the main cause of, uh, of the most or the majority of uh, our palpal and periapical uh, diseases. So why we are doing root canal treatment or endo treatment? Uh, what is the goal? The goal is to prevent or cure apical periodontitis. And we do that in two major steps. Uh, step number one is we need to eliminate the cause, which is mostly bacteria. Uh, and after that, we need, uh, this is by chemomechanical debridement. And then we need to seal the root canal um, system with a hermetic seal or hermetic filling um, that prevent uh, reinfection of the root canal system. So uh, uh, how we can remove um, the cause or the bacteria, we need to remove a vital necrotic remnant, uh, pulp tissue, bacteria, toxins by chemomechanical debridement. And chemomechanical debridement, we mean by that we need to use two things. First thing, we need to use special instruments, and these are the files, and this is the core of our topic today. Um, and then irrigation solution. So we use the files basically to enlarge the root canal system so to enable the irrigation solution to reach to the most apical part of the root canal system to disinfect and to digest pulp tissue. From what we see from the radiographs or x-ray, we see only canals, major canals, and we can see, okay, this is this case, it's easy. But remember, what we see is two-dimensional radiograph. This is number one. But in, in fact, it's a three dimension. Okay, number two, it's not only canals. In fact, the root canal system is a very complex three dimensional system. As you can see in this picture, it has a lot of um, uh, secondary canals, uh, fins, uh, isthmuses, all these spaces should be disinfected and all um, necrotic or vital tissue, pulp tissue should be removed. Then. After that, we have to seal all these spaces to prevent reinfection, according to the to what we said to the goal and objectives of root canal system. Okay, so from this picture, what we can see the root canal system or the canals are not straight lines. They're not straight, and as far as they go, we go apically. The canals become um, more narrow, more torturous, and sometimes um, more calcified. This is um, a nice three-dimensional demonstration of upper first molar. Um, this is by Root Canal Project Anatomy website. They have a lot of uh, 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 those animations. Uh, these are represent a truly natural teeth. By uh, certain softwares, they they um, they convert it into to this three three D model or three D animation. So that's what we are dealing with. We need according uh, so uh, for our topic today. We need to reach to the most apical part of these root canals. Um, this is a demonstration of lower molar. As you can see, mesial canals, they merge together or fuse together at the apical part and there is a, a isthmus in between. So, preparation of root canal system. Basic, basically, uh, the prepared canal should include the original canal. Okay, And uh, we should maintain apical constriction and the prepared canal should be uh, tapered. It means like the narrower part should be at the apex and a um, wider part is um, at the orifice. Um, so to do preparation of root canal, basically we have two sets of files, the special instrument. So we have two sets. We have the hand files, mostly are uh, made from stainless steel and we have indomated files, which are uh, nitile. Um, uh, from nickel titanium so we need to know each uh, set of files uh, what are made uh, like why they, ha they are made of and what are the objectives and what how can we utilize their um, characteristics so for the hand files it's made of stainless steel they have cutting tip okay this is very important and they are stiff files okay they have rigid they are they have some sort of rigidity and they are not flexible they don't have any flexibility okay while the rotary files they are composed uh, from nitite it's alloy from nickel titanium their tip is non-cutting tip unlike hand files unlike the stainless steel files okay 
and they have different levels of rigidity and flexibility that we will um, go through now. So from its name, the rotary files or endomated files, they are nitri, they're composed of nickel and titanium, okay? Nickel is responsible for rigidity and in our endodontic uh, terminology, it gives cutting efficiency to the file, okay? So when we, and also uh, the titanium is responsible for flexibility. That's why um, the nitri files have some sort of flexibility compared to stainless steel files, okay? Flexibility means less prone to file separation because um, uh, the file is flexible. However, we have different manufacturers, different companies, and each company have a different system. Each system is different than other system in terms of cutting efficiency and flexibility, depending on the amount of nickel or titanium they put in their files. For example, if we increase nickel in the, uh, in the file, of course the titanium percentage will be, uh, will be decreased. So when we increase nickel in the file, we will have more cutting efficiency at, in that file. But at the same time, the flexibility will be decreased. So it means the file is, le is more prone to file separation, okay? Why? If we increase um, the titanium in the file, just like blue files, most of the blue files, we will have decreased cutting efficiency, but the, these files are more flexible and more safe, okay? Although there are many approaches have done by, uh, by different manufacturers, like, like to treat the files, heat to treat it and whatever, to just compensate, to give um, the, uh, like the best in, ter in terms of uh, cutting efficiency and flexibility. So now, um, after we understood uh, what are uh, the components of the hand files, now how to use them. Because the hand files, they are made of stainless steel, as we said, they are rigid, they have no flexibility, they have cutting tip, so mostly we use them to negotiate the canal. As I, I, I demonstrated in, in the pictures that um, the root canal system is a three-dimension system. It's a complex three-dimensional system. So when we need to deal with it, we don't look to the X-ray and think, that's it, we need to go to the apex. No, it's a torturous road, okay? We need to reach or we need to deal with it in a three-dimension approach. So to do that, we, we can cut the preparation into two parts. First, we need to reach to the most apical part, like length or in vertical direction. Then we prepare in width, in horizontal, okay, or in lateral, uh, to be more uh, accurate. So this is the approach in, in root canal system preparation. First, in two steps, step one, we reach to the apex length, and then uh, we do a lateral preparation. So for that reason, for um, step number one, to reach to the apex, we need, and we know it's, it's a torturous road, we need a cutting tip, a file that has cutting tip, that can negotiate and it has a little bit of rigidity not flexibility that's why we are using hand files mostly this is in general okay and you know uh, each rule has uh, some differences but this is in general after we reach to the full working length by ss then we can use our night tie files to do lateral preparation okay so what are the possible hydrogen complications that we may encounter during root canal treatment? We may have file separation. The file may break in the canal. We may have ledge formation. We may have canal transportation, and we may have perforation. So in order to prevent or minima minimize these um, complications, we need to understand how these complications may happen, okay? So for file separation, file separation mostly, mostly occurred due to that the file is, doesn't have flexibility. So it means that it mostly occurred with hand files, right? Because they don't have flexibility. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen with um, night type files. No, it happens. It happens like when we are using um, uh, improper sequence, uh, improper approach, uh, the file has been used multiple times, okay, there is a, 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 
due to cyclic fatigue and uh, potential fatigue, the file will separate. And also for some files that has less flexibility, okay? But mostly occur with um, hand files. This is number one. Ledge formation, ledge formation, why it happened? Because of sharp end or sharp tip of, of the file. So it happens mostly with stainless steel files, right? Because rotary files or nighttime files, they don't have cutting tip. Okay, this is very important. Same for canal transportation, same for perforation. It's because of the sharp tip of the file. You may not, you may not notice um, that this happened at the hand file. It may happen to you through um, uh, NITA, but let me tell you, it already been initiated with the hand file then it's been increased with the night time okay so the main problem already been started or initiated with the hand file okay so in general to prevent these complications there is a recipe you can use it this is for general or, or the majority of cases if you follow these steps mostly you will have you are you are a safe side mostly you will have um, uh, uh, safe preparation without any complication first thing it's, uh, the, there are five steps okay first step we need to negotiate the orifice not the canal we ne need to negotiate the orifice we do this by hat file k file 10 okay k file 10 you just need to pre-bend the end the last two uh, two millimeters of the tip just pre-bend it or curve it and put in the insert in the canal or in the orifice always always by the way never use any file uh, neither stainless steel neither nighttime without good irrigation okay sodium hypochlorite irrigation to lubricate the process okay so prevent the hand file put inside the canal never apply any pressure because if you apply pressure you will have complications because the tip is is sharp okay and with watch wind motion just like uh, we do with our watches watch wind motion okay and you see that um, uh, the file will go deep uh, however in this first step we don't need the file to go deeper we just need to insert it in four to five millimeters that's it that's why it's called negotiator of the orifice after that we'll jump to uh, step number two which is coronal pre-flaring now we use uh, nitite many kids they have uh, orifice opener or sx uh, or a starting uh, uh, file usually it's a short file with very wide very tapered okay we also insert it in two three four millimeters that's it we just need to do or prepare the coronal part after that also get the canal we insert the k file again prepend of the tip no uh, no application of any pressure watch wide motion and go up and down until we reach the, the full working length. After that, we irrigate the canal again and insert the K-file 10 again, okay? To full working length, now we will measure the working length and then until the file, the K-file is loose in the canal, like up and down is loose, there are no obstructions, no, no difficulties. So the canal is patent, okay? After that, irrigate the canal and then use whatever nighttime file system you are comfortable with. You can use whatever. If you follow these steps, and also for your night type, if you follow the sequence, and not overusing the files, you will be safe in most of the cases, in the majority of the cases. Now, let's go back, or let's move to night tie system. What are the, uh, the shortages or shortcomings we have in our night tie system? Let's, um, Let's imagine the canal or preparing the canal just like using a drill in the wall, just like this picture. So when you're using the drill, at, this, at some point you will feel some resistance that the drill is not preparing anymore. So what you do, you take it back to empty the debris from the flutes and then you go back again. And you see that the, um, the drill is preparing, okay? It's the same concept, same idea in our night eye systems. Okay, so if you use, you know, we all know root canal treatment, you can say it's one of the most complicated dental procedures. Okay, um, so it's already complex. We need to um, 
uh, make it simple as possible okay as simple as possible so let's imagine this is a nighty file like you brought nighty file and you insert it in the canal if you're not using uh, the sequence um, uh, or recommendation by your manufacturer so if you already jump into a larger file that's what you what you will encounter because the file is drilling inside the canal there are debris the debris will be accumulating in the flutes and the file will be stuck or locked so what you're going to do you will press more that's the thing that, that where the complications start you press more and you will have file separation okay and this is this is some uh, examples of, of, of file separation so many factors like improper um, steps that i mentioned on how to negotiate or prepare the canal uh, um, uh, like the file being used a lot um, uh, the file has less flexibility okay and many many other things this is also how files separate which is a nightmare to most of the dentists unfortunately so uh, for the night tie let's go back to history uh, the first night the most like let's say one of the most famous um, one of the first famous file system being introduced was a pro taper so as you can see uh, from um, from this system from uh, which is an example okay we are doing now um, unlike before or in the past in the past we were using only hand files we we're doing step back technique we prepare the apical part first then we go back um, uh, to the coronal part which is uh, from biological uh, uh, point of view it's not the right treatment because you know we as as i mentioned that the etiology of of most of the diseases purple disease is the bacteria and the bacteria comes in coronal direction from um, from saliva from the oral cavity so we have more bacteria in the coronal part than the apical part if we are doing step back technique like we are preparing um, the coronal uh, the apical part first we will introduce we will force the bacteria to go deeply and then we will have flare so from biological point of view this is not the right technique so for the night eye we are doing uh, 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 crown down technique it means that we prepare first the coronal part then the middle part then the apical part to decrease the bacterial load and also give more space for the files and the debris um, uh, to uh, to go up coronal okay so from pro taper we had set of files we have three shaping files as you can see sx to prepare the coronal part and then uh, S1 for the middle part and S2 to shape uh, uh, the epical part. Then we have the finishing files. So at least you need to use four. At least you need to use four nighttime files. And also the recommendation of, of, uh, of this kit that you, need to, uh, that you need to use K file 10, then K file 15. To, uh, uh, like, like uh, uh, then you can use uh, these night eye. You cannot use this night eye immediately to the canal. Okay, so again, uh, there, there is no simplification. At that time, yes, it was simplification compared <coughs> to step back technique. But you know, uh, we are looking for more simplification. And many manufacturers, many kits being introduced, even from Fanta, they are using the same concept because they are using continuous rotation. The files continuous rotation so you cannot use single file in rotation because of the videos and uh, i showed because you will have because the debris will accumulate in the flutes and you will the file will stuck and then the file will separate regardless what are the the night eye uh, like how rigid the file is how flexible is at some point the files will separate okay so to solve this problem, uh, Dent Supply came up with the idea that the problem is not with the files, not with the comp component of the file, but actually it's in the movement of the file because it's in continuous rotation. So they developed a um, reciprocating file, which was wave one. Like the file will go in uh, counterclockwise, it will cut, then with clockwise, it will release or leave um, uh, the debris to go coronal okay 
but uh, and they they introduce it as a single file system that according to the width of the canal you can use uh, any of these files one of these files however uh, but in fact no because you still need to use another set prior to introduce wave one file okay so also three files then one file so again minimum four files so nothing has changed okay then they introduce instead of the three path files they introduce proglider which is a, a, a single path file but again it's wave one it's not single file endo it's not a single file preparation because you have to use a path file which is a rotary before it okay then wave one gold also they introduce wave one gold glider in reciprocation but the same it's not single file endo okay although it's reciprocating but the first the first single file endo was introduced was reciproc by vdw it's a reciprocating file okay but you can use only one file there is no need to path file or plug uh, proglider before it. only you need to go by the way for all preparation whatever the system we are using you have to negotiate the canal with kfl10 you have to make sure that you have patent pathway of the canal before introducing your system so the same whatever the system we go back to the recipe i have introduced the five um, five step recipe okay but for reciproc it was the first system endo system that a single file endo okay it prepare and finish in one file but what are the problems the problems is to overcome the file separation although it's reciprocation uh, because they decreased, um, they modified the angles of uh, of reciprocating, but to overcome the file separation, they introduced the minimum file, which was 25 size 25, with taper 8, which is too big. It's very aggressive. Although it's a fantastic file, but we are not dealing with concrete. We are dealing with the team. Okay, this number one. Number two, all reciprocating files they push uh, uh, the Epically, which in, in, in which we will have post-operative pain and there are also complications or issues with uh, crack genic generation although many studies been published there is there are no relation but again there are many studies and more studies been published that the uh, the relation between reciprocating movement and uh, the crack uh, generation okay which will turn in future for vertical root fracture okay although it's a technique sensitive depending on the practitioner depends on the tooth but you cannot use uh, reciprocating files as a single file system for all cases okay this is a uh, bottom line of it so now we need to simplify it again we need to supply it. simplify it because so far we haven't found um, an easy uh, file system however in fact um, um, they have developed a very nice file, okay? It's called AF1 um, file system. So what is the difference of this file? The file, this number one, it's a rotary file. It's not a reciprocating file, okay? And single file rotary system. You may ask, hey, you just mentioned that we cannot use rotary files in, in as a single file because of the cyclic fatigue. It should be in progressive enlargement or, um, or preparation. We will go through that, how we can use this file as a single file endo. So it's single file rotary, okay? Uh, the cross section of the file is S shape, okay? Which is which is considered one of the best cross section in files. Why? Because we have two active cutting um, ends or points and at the same time, we have more space for, uh, for debris to be uh, accumulated, okay? And you may say, okay, there are many files with uh, with this S shape, what is the difference? The main difference, the main difference is the innovative flat side design. So the file in one part or from one side, okay, it has a flat side design or a flat cut, okay? So it's not fully rounded, okay? So what, what this uh, feature can give us? That's the point, okay? As I mentioned, the major problem for file separation in night eye or in night eye files is the debris accumulated in the fruits okay so that's why the the file is not cutting in this file the debris will move 
or will sweep from the flutes into this safe side, okay, which is open to the coronal part. As far as the file rotating, okay, the debris will move to the flat side and then through the flat side in the coronal direction. So there is no accumulation of, uh, uh, of debris on the flutes and the blaze still or keeps sharp. Sharp. So we are, we are having continuous preparation, okay? And we will have more cutting efficiency, more debris removal, rather than accumulated on the file or being pushed in apical direction or lateral. No, they're, they're, uh, they're being removed in coronal direction. And also at the same time, we have more room for irrigation, more room for lubrication, more room for disinfection, okay? So that's the point. That's why, that's why we can use this file as a single file indoor, which is rotary. Why? Because we have overcome the main issue in, in, in rotary file, which is uh, the debris accumulation. Okay? So in this way, we have less stress subjected by the file. Why? Because the debris is being continuously removed in coronal direction and decrease the file, the chance of the file separation. Let me tell you one thing. Every dentist have encountered a lot of file separation. No, don't please don't let anyone tell you that he has never fi uh, file separation. Okay, because this is a usual thing, and uh, in fact, it's the most usual um, uh, complication in endo that um, that uh, dentists can encounter. But to be honest with you, with this file, and in, in last for because I've been using this file for the last four years, maybe one occasion maybe one occasion however what if the file separated get separated it's a nightmare for any dentist but for this file it will it's very easy to be bypassed why because uh, of the flat side design you can bypass through this flat side design with k file and then enlarge so it's very easy any general dentist can do bypass if if he got file separation of f1 no need to refer to any specials, okay? So, the, the flat is not cut deeply into the core of the man's obese woman. Sorry for that. Okay. So, um, F1 file being compared to a previous file being, uh, uh, being introduced by Fanta, which is uh, S1, okay? They have the same uh, design, I mean, uh, the cross section but without the flat side design they have seen that the high it has f1 has 150 percent higher resistance to cyclic fatty compared to s1 so only with this flat side design look at the difference same same design same cross section same size same taper but the difference only with this flat side design and there is 150 percent higher resistance to cyclic fatigue okay it's been developed, they have many uh, wires, NITA wires, it's been from AFR wire, which is more flexible, okay? So again, in this file, what Fanta has done, at the same file, because I showed you in the diagrams, like if you increase the NITA, you will compromise the flexibility. If you increase the flexibility, the, the, uh, the cutting efficiency will be decreased, okay? But in this file, the, or, the flexibility is already high, and they have increased the cutting efficiency through this design. So in one file, we have higher cutting efficiency and higher flexibility. And this is very well, very well in, in terms of um, indoor files. So how can we use this file? Again, I'll go back to the steps I have mentioned. Negotiating of the orifice with K-file in watch wind motion. Then I use orifice opener, okay, or SX for four, three to four millimeters, okay? Then I do scouting of the canal, negotiation of the canal until I'm sure that the canal is uh, fully patterned, then I will jump immediately to the, uh, uh, to the F1 file. We can use 25 taper four or 25 taper six, depending on the canal. But have, look, we are jumping now from 10, to 25 immediately with very in very safe manner okay why because of the special design of the file let's see some examples 
So the recommendation, for the example, how can we use this file? It's a single file system. It's continuous rotation, not reciprocation, and you need to use it in 500 RPM. Not 300, not 350, no. 500, and the torque should be 2.6. You have to use these uh, uh, recommendation by the manufacturer because these are the best to get the best result. And also for any file system you're using, it's always better to follow the recommendation of the manufacturer okay so let's demonstrate how to use this file this is a model of upper first molar we're going to prepare mb1 and mb2 you can see in this model that the mb1 is white so now we are using um, we are doing coronal brief learning the irrigation then after that i will do scouting of the canal take working length until i'm sure the canal is fully patted then I can use our file. So this canal is why I will use 25 taper six. It's very easy. I know this is model, it doesn't reflect uh, the reality, but, but I just wanna show you the process or the sequence of um, how to do uh, root canal preparation with this file. For the MB2, again, coronal pre-flaring, irrigation, then scouting of the canal. And after that, I will prepare this canal with 25 taper four why because it's a little um, narrow canal compared to 25 taper six no need to enlarge that more okay now this is a, a case is very nice case so in this case i ha, i already prepared uh, or negotiated the canal i prepared uh, the coronal part now i go i'm going to um, to the canal so as you can see this is 25 taper four it went uh, fluently into the canal okay this is very nice case why because after preparation of the canal of the canals you have to take a deeper look to the pulp chamber to see if there is anything missing and in this case there was an extra mesial canal which was middle mesial it was very narrow it took me a lot of time actually to negotiate the canal with k Fountain. so after negotiation I used immediately after negotiation with K file 10, I used immediately 25 taper 4. And as you can see, how the file goes smoothly inside this narrow extra canal and how the debris are coming out in coronal direction. Because we are having active cutting efficiency. With other files, it's almost impossible to use to jump from K file 10 to size 25 taper 4. Okay, why? Because we have room for the uh, debris to go in coronal direction. Okay, this is another scenario. So now, let's go to our topic. Our topic, like we have complications. We need to know how to identify these complications so we can formulate treatment plan to prevent or minimize the occurrence. Always, always study your uh, preoperative radiograph before doing uh, the treatment please so we, in this case like what i can see i have uh, i have taken periapical and bitewing from this case i can see it's evident that uh, there is pulp stone in the pulp chamber so it and also the evident are the canal are very narrow so as far as the pulp chamber is calcified so you may have calcified canals right Okay, so I know now, I know what, what I'm gonna face before starting the treatment. So after I, because this case was referred from a colleague after I have removed the uh, temporary restoration, look at this pulp stone. He was not able to find the canals. Why? Because he didn't clean the pulp chamber perfectly. Okay, after I have, I have removed um, the decay and the, uh, the pulp stones, look at the pulp chamber even under the microscope with higher magnification, I could not see any orifice. But I know the location of the orifices. How? Because I need to follow the pulp map, as you can see. So again, I have applied the recipe, the five set recipe, okay? K file 10 to negotiate the orifice, then pre-flaring, then negotiating of the canal, then uh, make sure that you have patent pathway, then I have used uh, night type which is uh, which was um, f125 taper 4 okay it went fluently and even the mb2 
was, has been found and been prepared. And this is the final radiograph. It's not a magic, it's only steps that you need to follow. Before that, you need to identify your case, read carefully your x-ray before doing the treatment plan. Okay, so you have, because it's a battle, you have to make sure that your weapons are ready. Okay, and this is another case. Okay, so I showed you calcified canals. Look at this upper a second premolar or upper five. It was very long and at the same time, no canals. Okay, the length was 29 okay, millimeters. Again, applying the same recipe, the canal being negotiated and prepared with 25 Taper four, okay. There is no magic. It just takes minutes to prepare the whole canal. But you need to know what you are facing, and to need to know what protocol or steps you need to follow, and you have to apply it perfectly. And this is another case. Already, these cases I have already been um, uh, talked about, but this presentation is for new. And also, I will talk about modification we have done in the treatment. So, in this upper first molar, we have 90 degree curvature of the canal, 90 degree of the mesiobuccal root. Okay, but the same, same procedures. I have applied like negotiating of the canal. Then I've I have used very good file, which is this F125 taper four, which give me good flexibility, good cutting efficiency, and promote. Uh, um, uh, cleaning of, of the of the canal from debris as they move in coronal direction because of the flat side design. Okay, and this full case you can um, see it's been published on Pub Dentistry. Okay, how about calcified, very calcified canals? Look at this upper premolar, upper four. There are um, there is no evidence on the radiograph of the canals, even uh, clinically, but. I know there are canals. Listen, when someone telling you uh, there is a blocked canal, this is a myth. There is no blocked canal. There is calcified canal. When a dentist telling you the canal is blocked, it means he made a ledge or he couldn't negotiate the canal. But there is no blocked canal. There is very narrow canal. And as evident, look at the radiolucency. So as far as there is apical radiolucency, it means there are canals. You just need to look on. How to look? Look at the pulp chamber remove all, all the calcifications, follow the pulp map, follow these five steps by the recipe. I know for this case, to be honest, uh, to be honest with you, it was a nightmare for me to negotiate the canal with K510. It was a nightmare. It took me around 35 minutes to 40 minutes only to negotiate the canals. Okay. After that, no, it was just a matter of two or three minutes to prepare the canal with 25 taper form immediately from K510 to taper uh, to size 25 taper 4 and that was the final result so now with these cases you can say that we have solved most of the problems with um, with canal preparation but we still as in this case have an issue with canal negotiation because sometimes there are cases they are nightmare they are very narrow they are very calcified almost there is no canal so what should we do? Should we leave the tooth? Should we extract the tooth? Or should we try? So for that reason, okay, we have developed a new technique or new approach. And I will explain uh, in this case. So this case, it's a 51 or 52 um, uh, British patient, female patient. She came to me. Um, uh, she did the restoration a year ago, okay, and she came um, and at another clinic and she presented that she has some discomfort some sensitivity to biting and cold okay after examination she did uh, this restoration we are talking about upper first molar so she did the restoration a year ago okay i checked the cl clinically the response to cold was normal compared to adjacent teeth there was little bit tenderness or let's say discomfort but there was high spot, a little bit high spot, almost unnoticeable. So I did uh, occlusal adjustment and I told her, hey, let's review after four weeks. So she came after four weeks, actually the pain increased. It was signs and symptoms and after a clinical examination, it was uh, uh, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. So why this happened? This happened because of occlusal trauma. 
it was very tiny and noticeable, but it was applying trauma to the pulp. So put on your mind. And also the patient after the history, she grind her teeth during night. Okay, because she's on retirement now, she will retire soon, she, she's going back to the UK. So you need to put all these things in your mind. So she's 52, okay? It means what? You know, there is narrowing with aging, we have narrowing in the pulp chamber and the canals. And we have trauma, occlusal trauma, both from the high spot of the restoration and she grind her teeth. And it's evident on the radiograph. Look at the upper six. What is the pulp chamber? It's all calcified. There is no pulp chamber. And almost there is no canals. Okay. So before I start the treatment, I should know what I'm facing. So I have to be prepared. Okay. So after the access opening, the, again, as was expected, the pulp chamber was completely calcified. And with ultrasonic, I have removed the calcifications and the stones okay and then to identify the orifices okay by following the pulp map and we will see the same we will do the same recipe we'll follow the same recipe okay it's very easy okay k file 10 identify the orifice with k file 10 okay negotiation of the orifice and after that pre-flaring of the orifice okay or the coronal part of the canal with SX or uh, open file for a few millimeters. You don't need more, okay? And then scouting of the canal, make the canal is patent, okay? Scout with K-file 10 up to full working length. So I'm doing the uh, coronal preparation for all the canals, okay? As you can see. So, you know, upper first smaller. We have three major canals and we have accessory canal or MB2, okay? And even with the removal of the calcification at coronal preflaring, you see the orifices are very narrow. So scouting of the canal with K-file 10 and patent pathway now, I jump immediately to 25 taper 4, okay, to prepare to full working layer. And as you can see, the file went fluently, very easy. With good amount of lubrication or irrigation, it goes, why? Because of the flat side design. And you can see here, you can see the debris are going out in coronal direction okay it's very nice so this is not a magic you know everyone can do these cases everyone can um, treat these cases no need for a special but you need to know what you are facing you need to know uh, how to deal with each case okay now for as i said this is upper fair smaller we have three major canals and mb2 mb2 exists in the majority of the cases of upper first molar. So imagine what's going to be the treatment for MB2, which is an accessory canal, and for the major canals was very difficult. So for that reason, as a collaboration between Style Italiano Endodontics and Fanta Company, we have developed this essential kit by Style Italiano Endo. It's the same concept of F1 system, flat side design, but we have introduced different sizes and tapers and one of them one of the greatest files i've ever uh, used is this one it's f1 13 size 13 taper 3 we call it glider st what this glider st can do okay same case now we are moving to mb2 we are trying to negotiate the orifice so now we have identified the the location of the canal and the K-file doesn't go even to the orifice. We all know that um, uh, MB2 is hiding under shoulder of dentine. So see, there is only cash, only one millimeter. So I have removed um, this shoulder of dentine to expose the orifice of MB2 more. Even though after that, I try not to negotiate the canal. I just want to negotiate the orifice of MB2 with C-file. Now I'm using C-file. 10 and as you can see it didn't go even for one millimeter i tried even with ultrasonic more and more it was impossible because it was calcified so now what we're going to do we are dealing now with we're using this glider st 13 taper 3 we do mechanical scouting not manual scouting mechanical scouting look at it okay it's size 13 okay 
how it goes smoothly inside the canal okay a little bit difficulty we can face but no need to apply pressure okay because if you apply pressure the file of course maybe break or you will have hydrogen complication now i went for a few millimeters i negotiated the orifice mechanically then i have enlarged with f125 taper four okay so now i prepared the coronal part okay and again it was impossible to introduce the cefalten i tried it doesn't it didn't go uh, any deeper again i went back to use this glider st with the flat side design and also it went smoothly and this endomotor is attached to a um, uh, apex locator okay so when i reach to the full working length it will beep and i will know i will not jeopardize or make any harm to apical construction and also if there is any forgot any any complication like perforation it will be okay but if you go smoothly it will not go cause any uh, atrogen complication and look at the debris how, how the file going uh, in uh, apically in a smooth way and how are the debris are going out so now we have mechanical scouting of one of the most difficult cases it's mb2 it's calcified even the k file or c file was not able to go for any millimeter deep okay so why how is that possible because of the flat side design after that i took the working length i make sure of the working length and i prepared the mb2 also with 25 taper 4 okay and also it goes immediately why because fluently why because the canal is patent but how it became patent with mechanical scouting with uh, uh, glider st which is f1 size 13 taper 3 look at the debris how the debris is coming out i've never seen any file to take out debris like this file in coronal direction all the debris now accumulated here so nothing goes or or at least minimum compared to other files to go uh, in apical direction so all this because of the flat side design okay now we have more complex case the same as the previous case i just showed you it's it's upper fair smaller okay calcified there's pulp stone calcification in the pulp chamber not only the canals here are calcified but the mesio buccal root which has the mb2 has severe curvature okay so the canal same it was the same procedure i will show you the canal was impossible to negotiate with k file 10 it was calcified and here it has severe curvature okay look at the pulp stone and the pulp chamber after that after i have removed the calcification now i'm preparing the same same idea okay i was unable to introduce k file or c file 10 or even 6 into that canal now i'm using this lidar st which is f1 size 13 taper 3 with flat side design look how it goes into the canal and how the debris is coming out you may see why there is no irrigation because there was nothing there was no space to put the irrigation in okay until i reached full working length okay it was very smooth and after that look at the curvature after i did the scouting i introduced the k faulting to take the working length look how the canal is torturous so there was no manual scouting only mechanical scouting with this f1 size 13 3 how nice is that okay so it's not a magic okay it just to know how when and what to use okay and this is fully prepared now we have now we have different scenarios so according to the situation listen we cannot apply same concept for all cases because for me indoor cases or root canal system it's just like fingerprints there are general rules but uh, there are uh, they are not all the same now before any case again you have to read the x-ray uh, pre-operative x-ray very carefully what we see in this case we see here 
we see here calcifications inside the canal not only on the surface if you see in this lower molar and the distal you see there is evident pulp stone not calcification pulp stone what goes which goes inside the canal up to the middle part okay and also for the mesial canals you see there is calcification inside the middle part okay which is and which is which is not easy especially for this tooth because this this tooth is very long at the same time okay it was 26 long 26 millimeter long 26 or 26.5 however in this case i had to do modification i had to do modification because again what applies to the majority doesn't apply to to every case so what i have done in this case so i did i have removed the pulp stone i did uh, the pre endo build up okay and as you can see in the lower uh, left uh, image all the canals are calcified okay now i have treated this case in four steps okay i did modification so first thing was coronal preflaring what i have done with using uh, this um, uh, kit i have done coronal negotiation with k-file 10 it went a few millimeters only then I have used 25 taper 6 okay for 4 to 5 millimeters to do coronal preflaring okay so this is coronal part so this case was treated like coronal part first middle part first and then apical uh, apical uh, sorry coronal part first then middle part after that the uh, uh, the apical part okay coronal middle and apical it's um, it's the perfect scenario of crown down technique okay now the middle third preparation now i have used glider st file 13 taper 3 to a depth of 90 millimeter i was not able or i didn't want to go deeper than that okay because the canals are calcified and very narrow and very long so I have used the glider ST 13.3 to a 19 millimeter to the middle part, okay, in all canals. See, it's not easy, even with this file and what you have seen in previous cases, it was not easy to go deeper, okay. And after that, I have used size 20 taper 4 also to the working length of uh, 19 millimeter, okay. So enlarging third by third, coronal, then middle, third. Okay. And after that, we were preparing, we prepared the final third, which is the apical third. So now I have negotiated with K-File 10. Okay. Then I have used Glider ST 13 taper 3 to full working length. So it was 24, my bad. But there was very torturous, very torturous uh, uh, apical part. So after scouting with K-File 10, I have introduced 13.3 to full working length. And after that, I finished the preparation of all canals. So this is scouting mechanical scar or preparation 13 taper 3 now uh, the measure canals were prepared with uh, size 20 taper 4 okay minimal invasive there was no need to go up to um, uh, 24 uh, 25 at this case for the measure but for the distal because it was one canal uh, we prepared to uh, 25 taper 6 and this is the final as you can see we prepared in this case up to 20 in the mesial canal up to 20 taper 4 okay and for the distal it was 25 taper 6 so again there is no general rule um, um, for or for all cases but for the majority of cases we can use the recipe that i have told you but in sometimes in certain cases you need to modify but you need to know how or when to modify it. like you need to read the x-ray very clearly you need to know what to what you are facing okay 
then you need to know what to use and how to use and if needed how to modify of course you need to use the perfect instruments that suits you uh, in, in that certain case okay so um, we have mentioned um, these scenarios I think I have covered uh, most of the difficult scenarios that we may encounter in uh, in a primary indoor in preparing like curved canal calcified canals uh, long canals combination of both we have I have dealt with all these cases with the F1 with the recipe and sometimes in some cases I did some modification but all of these was let's say impossible to do in that few number of files one file or two files without this feature of flat side design it's impossible okay now how about secondary indoor how about retreatment now we know um, the strength uh, of or the, the the most important feature of the f1 file is because of the flat side design its ability to remove debris in coronal direction can we use the same concept in retreatment look at this case it's the same okay now what I have done in this case, I have did coronal preparation, okay, or retreatment. This is lower molar. Why I, I have used SX? Can I use F1 immediately? Because I just needed to make a space to put the F1 so it can engage with the getter perker. Okay. Now I have used an or retreatment. I need rigid file. I'm I, I'm not keen more about flexibility, so I'm using 25 taper six in all of retreatment cases. Look at this case. It's a single file without any lubrication, without any getter perka solvent. F1 went smoothly inside the canal. It did the retreatment. It removed the getter perka. It did re-instrumentation again. Why? And the file didn't break, didn't separate without any solvent because of the flat side design because it enables the gutta perka to move in coronal direction so the file doesn't stuck, doesn't lock inside the canal that's why there is no file separation okay and you may ask like uh, uh, like for the previous cases how come you do uh, mechanical scouting with, uh, with the rotary not with hand file don't you afraid that you can make a ledge that you may uh, do perforation cal transportation Again, all night, all night eye files, they don't have cutting tip. Cutting tips, what makes these hydrogenic complications, which is mostly happen with the hand files, improper use of hand files. Can it happen with night eye ledge? Yes, it can happen in two scenarios. Number one, when the ledge or perforation already initiated by the hand file and then it's been increased by the rotary when you push more when you see it's stuck you push more number two you apply force you apply very hard force like in uh, or uh, strong force when you're doing your mechanical scouting okay so again no pressure at all now let's go to more difficult cases now we have this upper first model which has to be retreated but it was not uh, obturated with with getter perka it was thermophile with its plastic core i had no other option let me try what i have to lose because for me uh, if if i'm not the one who try so who am gonna try because i have all instrument to deal with any complication so again 25 taper six i insert it in the canal and the endo motor is attached to apex locator to allow me when i reach the apex look at the f1 25 taper 6 it went smoothly inside the canal it cut the getter perka it cut the hard plastic core of thermophile it re-instrumented the canal with only one file no irrigation no lubrication and again no getter perka solvent why because of the feature that's what we need okay so the magic of the file is with its feature look at the distobical canal it's the same how easy it takes out the cataparca, it cuts the plastic core. Okay, look at Okay, so this video, no editing, nothing. It's from directly from the microscope. I just cut, you know, uh, like uh, the unnecessary thing. But the whole procedure, it's one shot for each canal. 
one shot for each canal it was retreatment then I had to take like to spend more time with irrigation ultrasonic activation to take any uh, remnant this case also had missing MB2 again negotiating of the orifice okay it was a missed canal coronal pre-flaring then scouting of the canal with K510 then jumping from 10 to F1 size 25 taper 4 okay and again look at the debris how the debris is coming out that's why we are having continuous uh, cutting efficiency of the canal now it's ready for obturation retreatment and opening of this um, uh, mb2 canal okay and this is another case in this case it, i had to do a modification actually because this case being referred it has three separated instruments okay if you can see here in the canal actually it was four separated instruments at the same level i'm sorry let me go back to the video okay it had four separated i'm sorry for that so yes it had four separated instruments here at the same level it was impossible to remove these or retrieve these instruments by using any mean uh, any mean of any retrieval kit why because they are all at the same level i tried with ultrasonic it was not possible uh, I'm, I'm keeping using uh, the space bar and it turns yes okay it turns to the uh, next slide so yes i have used different um, kits ultrasonic it was impossible to retrieve why because it, they all were in the same level okay i tried a bypassing it was also impossible i put lubrication sodium hypochlorite i used it as a lubrication it was impossible i had no other option i had to risk okay so at that case I said, let me try. What what what, what may happen? Can I, uh, like file separation? I already have four. What's the worst scenario can happen? I have used this file, okay, but I didn't use it in continuous rotation. I put it in reciprocation movement, okay. Ninety degree, one one hundred, uh, yes, one hundred fifty clockwise and thirty counterclockwise, okay. First thing. Um, I just uh, was checking the site where I'm going to introduce my file then put irrigation after that I have introduced this glider ST in order to try to do mechanical bypass not manual bypass uh, between these four instruments and remember we are not doing bypass between metal and dentine we're doing between all around metal okay with a very thin file which is size 13 but it went smoothly for a few millimeters which was a good sign okay i did good irrigation then i have used 25 taper 6 to enlarge that few millimeters i went through okay so it's a modification sometimes like depending on the case you have to improvise okay then after that okay irrigation a little bit activation to remove debris okay and now i was checking yes so during this okay yes then i have introduced again size 13 taper 3 now to go deeper okay again or reciprocating movement 150 clockwise and 30 counterclockwise and it went to full working length mechanical scouting or mechanical bypassing with glider st it's night eye file between four separated instruments okay it went smoothly why again because of the flat side design this is the future that's what's most important okay after the epic locator peep 
I have reached the full working length. Now I jumped to 25 after I, I took the working length, checking again the working length, my K file. Yes, it was a patent kennel. Okay, took working length. Then I have jumped to 25 taper six. Again, a reciprocating movement. Okay, and also it went to full working length. So I have prepared the canal. But what happened after I finished the preparation during the activation with sonic and ultrasonic, all of these for a, a broken instrument or separated instrument, they jumped. Okay, they were jumped outside the canal. So it was mechanical bypass and retrieval at the same time. All of them, four of these canals. Okay, and you can see here, now with irrigation, and I'm doing activation, look at the activation, and you will see how the, see this is the first one, it's here, it's jumped during activation, look at, this is the first one, the first broken instrument, okay. So I took out this broken instrument and then during activation at activation I had all of these broken instruments out. This is second one, third one, fourth one and these are all of the separated instruments. Okay. How was, how was that possible? because of the flat side design and I did modification. Yes, I did modification, reciprocating movement. Yes, I agree. Okay, and this is the final result. So again, uh, talking about, um, talking about uh, preparation, our topic, we have done our uh, webinar for today. Most importantly, you need to know, you need to study your preoperative radiograph perfectly to know what exactly you are having what exactly you're gonna face what complications that you might encounter and then you have to be so you can uh, be prepared again I have showed you like let's say most of the difficult scenarios that you may encounter but it was possible these lectures not for specialists only for fresh for GDPs, for general dental practitioners. Everyone can do this procedure. Just read your x-ray, know what you are facing, follow the steps of canal preparations. This is for the majority of cases, and then you can modify according to the situation you are having. Again, all of these cases were done or treated or retreated very fluently because of the flat side design of the after -hour. Okay, I hope it, uh, this webinar was beneficial and now I'm ready to answer all of your questions. Until next time, stay safe. So, Ahmed, great presentation, absolutely. We got a few questions from the audience, so just let me quickly grab notes. Okay. So, the very first question, what is the best file for bypassing ledge or separated files finder c or k file c plus or k yes, yes. Um, um, so you can use c file or files or c plus files these are more c files than k files okay. we use them for edge bypass uh edge uh, uh, bypass or uh, file separation bypass why right? because they are more stiff okay and not easy to separate but can we use these files uh, regular canal uh, negotiation? I don't know that. Why? Because at the same time, the tip is more sharp, so it will more prone to cause hydrogen negotiation. Okay. So for regular uh, negotiation, we are using K files. But uh, for bypass, it depends. The name difference is on which company. Either C file, C plus file, C file or file. That's it. So super cool. Now, uh, there is another question, and this time is uh, more about the essential kit that you, of course, presented 
So the question is, don't you think that the essential kit itself need an orifice opener? What do you think about this? Uh, be because we already described. So the nice thing about this kit, when you open it, you have the description of the use. I think it's the first file system when you open it, have instruction how to use. So you can use a F1 file size 25, paper 6 as office opener. You use it only for a few millimeters, three, four, five millimeters. Very good. And last but not least question is, is it more safe to use Fanta AF file in reciprocating mode? Um, um, just like I, I, I have I mentioned at the beginning, whatever file system you are using, always follow the uh, instructions by the manufacturer because they have tested this file and they told you this is the best setting that you are using. For F1 file, it's meant to be work in water uh, okay? If you're using, uh, listen, uh, the most the most famous two association files we are having, wave one and we have principles by the Both of them, the main the main motion is out of the point. You know what I mean? But while for the F1, it's clockwise. Okay. And also, and also the safe the side, side, the flat side design, it's meant that so, so it can be more as, as a continuous position. So there is no point to use it as a reciprocating. I have used it as a reciprocating movement in that case because I was not dealing with a canal. I was dealing with four walls of four instruments. Okay? So I had to be a, a little bit cautious. I cannot hear you. Sorry, too many ideas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this presentation, for this great evening. Uh, I saw a lot of people connected, a lot of reactions, so that was definitely something that a lot of people enjoyed. So thank you very much, and thank you, uh, audience, for having connected with us. We'll see you soon, hopefully with the next live presentation from Stadi Italiano Dodontics. Thank you, Ahmed, and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good thank evening, everybody. Everybody, good night. Everyone. Bye.